AI video generation is exploding right now, and Grok has officially entered the space with its own video generator. So in this video, I'm not just talking about Grok, I'm actually testing Grok video generation live, checking the quality, motion, styles, and most importantly, figuring out what you can realistically use this tool for. I'll also tell you what's free, what's locked behind a paid plan, and whether upgrading even makes sense. So first, let's get this clear. Grok's video generation is part of Grok Imagine, which you can find on grok.com imagine, and it's also mainly accessible through the Grok mobile app. The good news? Yes, Grok video generation is available for free. Free users get limited video generations, similar to how image quotas work. You can generate short videos, usually around 6 to 15 seconds, and Grok automatically adds sound to them. Now, if you're on a paid plan like Super Grok or Premium Plus, you get much higher generation limits, priority access, and fewer restrictions, which matters if you plan to generate a lot or test multiple styles quickly. Let's start clean and realistic. This helps set a baseline. Prompt is a person walking through a busy city street at sunset, natural lighting, realistic movement. While this generates, what I'm looking at is motion stability, lighting consistency, and whether the scene feels natural or artificial. Honestly, this already shows Grok's strength. The motion feels cohesive and the lighting works well for short scenes. You can tell it's optimized for quick visual storytelling, not hyper-detailed cinema. Before generating more, Grok also lets you choose animation modes and this actually changes the vibe of the output. You have normal mode, which is realistic and balanced, fun, which is playful, exaggerated, Whoa, and more cartoonish, and spicy, which is bold and expressive. This one can get suggestive and only works with AI-generated images, not uploaded ones. Free users can try these modes too, but with limits. Spicy mode also has safeguards, so extreme prompts may get blurred or restricted. Now, let's push it visually. Prompt, a cinematic shot of a lone traveler standing on a cliff overlooking the ocean, dramatic lighting, slow camera movement. Here, Grok does a decent job with atmosphere. The camera motion is subtle, but the mood comes through. This kind of prompt works really well for concept visuals, trailers, or mood shots. Let's switch things up. Prompt, a Pixar-style robot dancing in a neon city, colorful lights, playful animation. This is where fun mode shines. The movements are exaggerated, expressions feel lively, and honestly, this is perfect for short-form content, reels, or creative experiments. It doesn't aim for realism, and that's actually the point. Instead of pushing limits, let's try something safe but expressive. A dramatic fashion shoot with intense lighting and confident poses, cinematic mood. You can see how the expressions and body language are more pronounced here. It's clearly built for high energy visuals, not subtle realism. You can also make videos from images and even sketches or animate your doodles. After testing all of this, here's what works best. Start with one clear subject, then mention mood or style and only lightly guide camera movement. Overloading prompts doesn't help here. Grok performs better when you direct it like a scene, not describe every detail. Short, confident prompts equal better results. So how good is Grok video generation? For short clips, creative ideas, and fast visuals, it's solid. Motion is stable, styles are fun to experiment with, and the learning curve is very low. It's not meant to replace professional video tools, but as a quick AI visual generator, it absolutely holds its place. This makes the most sense for creators testing ideas, social media visuals, concept shots, anyone who wants fast AI-generated videos without complex tools. If you're generating occasionally, the free plan is enough. If you're creating a lot or experimenting heavily, Super Grok or Premium Plus saves time. So yeah, Grok video generation is fun, accessible, and actually usable right now. As long as you treat it like a creative playground, not a full production studio, you'll enjoy it. I'll keep testing it as it evolves because this space is moving fast. If you want me to compare this with tools like Kling, Vio, or Higgsfield next, drop a comment and let me know. I'll see you in the next one.